Hey there, it's Dr. Justin Marcajani, and today's talk is going to be on probiotics and dysbiosis. So let's break down what probiotics and dysbiosis are before we move forward. So probiotics are essentially good bacteria. So we have the prefix pro, and then biotic means bacteria, good bacteria. We have dysbiosis, dys essentially meaning bad or not in harmony with, and then biosis is similar to biotic, meaning bad bacteria or a bad ratio of bacteria. So typically in the gut, so we're gonna have good bacteria with the G, we're gonna have bad bacteria in the B, and you can see here, we're on this nice scale. So when bad bacteria weighs things down more, right? So you can see we have higher amount of bad bacteria, and then we have less good bacteria. You can see with the downward triangle there, this is what I consider, or what I essentially would call a dysbiosis. Higher amounts of bad stuff in relationship to good. So that 80-20 rule, the Pareto's principle, 80-20, so 80% should be good, 20% should be bad. In dysbiosis, it's actually flipped. It's 80% bad, 20% good. Now this is important because a lot of people that I see, they're gung-ho about probiotics. And probiotics can be very beneficial, but if we're putting a whole bunch of good bacteria into a gut that's full of bad bacteria, we may not get the best bang for our buck. So kind of think of a garden, right? Go in your backyard, a garden's full of weeds. You wouldn't go down and throw a whole bunch of seeds into a garden full of weeds. The first thing you do would, would actually be weed the garden out first, and then you aerate it, and then you could actually put the seeds down. And you probably even put the seeds down with some, with some fertilizer or some humus, something to help cultivate it and allow the seeds to take a foothold and grow. So that's kind of the philosophy. I'm gonna elaborate on that in real world terms in just a few minutes here. But again, a lot of people that take probiotics, especially the lactobacillus kind, the lactobacillus bulgaris, KCI, some of these bacteria, even though they're good, when you have a whole bunch of bad bacteria in the gut, you can spit off histamine, CO2, and all kinds of things that could cause you to be gassy or actually feel even more bloated or worse. So imagine we have a whole bunch of bad bacteria here. I'll put a whole bunch of bees here, all right? And this is inside your intestinal tract. And if we throw some good bacteria, if we throw some probiotics on here, if we throw some probiotics on there, and there's so much bad stuff, we may get histamine out of it. We may get histamine. And we may even get CO2. And a lot of these things make us, make us feel bloaty, gassy, cause indigestion, even make us more inflamed. So a lot of times we do better coming in and actually cleaning out the bad stuff and then we don't have all of the CO2 and the histamine response. So if you're one of those people that gets bloaty or gassy or doesn't feel too well after probiotics, it's probably because we have a dysbiosis in, in the microbiome. So how do we assess dysbiosis? Well, there's a couple things. We can look at the probiotic test. So the probiotic test is a good marker, the one that I just mentioned. Probiotic test. Next is how do you do with, with introducing resistant starch? So I've done other videos on resistant starch. Again, that could be potato flour or unripened banana flour. So how do you do with that? Does resistant starch make you feel more bloated or more gassy? Next, we can use clinical symptoms like I already mentioned there. We can also look at the skin. If we see the skin's broken out, we almost always see the skin as a mirror of the gut. Clear skin, clear gut. Again, if the gut's disrupted, we're gonna see negative skin. So poor complexion, poor, poor complexion. Now to the nitty gritty, we have some good lab tests too. We can do a general stool test. Again, the quality of the testing does matter. Again, if you go to my site, justinhealth.com slash shop, click on the category that says lab test and you'll see some of the really good lab tests that I recommend. Again, you can do organic acid testing. Organic acids can be very helpful. There's a couple different organic acid markers. Uh, D-lactate's one for dysbiosis, phenylacetate. There's a couple different markers that essentially can be assessed on a, a organics test that can help figure out if you have dysbiosis. Again, the tests aren't perfect, so sometimes we may not see indican, we may not see D-lactate, we may not see uh, phenylacetate, we may not see these organic acids, but there still may be a dysbiosis there. So it's a good general marker. 
And again, a lot of times the people that have gut issues, it may not just be a dysbiosis by itself. We may have an infection. So a lot of times the infections in the body, let's say it's, let's say the infection is Giardia or Crypto. I'll just give a, a couple of parasites that I've seen this week in my clinic. We'll do Crypto and we'll do Giardia. Well, if we have those infections present in the microbiome, it's going to be hard no matter what we do to get the dysbiosis down unless we get the infection addressed. So if we have a chronic gut infection, that may weaken the microbiota, it may lower the IgA. The IgA is that, that barrier that lines our mucous membrane in our, in our vaginal canal, if you're a woman, the urinary tract, nasal canal, and gut. So if we have low IgA, we may be prone to more infections. Again, the infections will weaken the immune system, create more dysbiosis, create malabsorption. It will shut down stomach acid. If stomach acid shut down, then we have an inability to break down protein, ionize minerals, keep a nice low pH to keep the bacteria, the bad bacteria from growing. If that's imbalanced because of the infection, we're automatically creating an environment for all the bad stuff to grow. So if you're doing this, if you're having problems with probiotics, if you're having problems with resistant starch, if you have poor complexion, poor skin issues, Again, get a good quality stool test, get a good quality organic acid test to see if there's something deeper. If you already have the clinical signs and symptoms, then I would move forward and go on an antimicrobial regimen. I've had some couple of videos on this in the past, but some good antimicrobial herbs are berberines, oil of oregano. I've run hundreds of these tests along with sensitivities, and the best ones tend to be the berberines, which are like the golden seal, the organ grape, the berberine HCL, along with the oil of oregano. But if you have a deeper infection, or deeper issues, you have to make the diet and lifestyle changes and you have to get the, the root infection addressed before you really get good results moving forward. And most people with chronic gut issues do really well supporting the adrenals in conjunction with addressing the gut issues. So again, check below, I have some really great video series on similar topics relating to the thyroid and the hormonal system. Also my um, video on the devastating effects of gluten and how gluten can cause a lot of these problems too. And again, there'll be more videos coming your way. And if you need help with these issues yourself, check below and find ways to get in touch with me. Thanks. Have a great day.